Few grounds in the world of football can boast the history of the Messiah. We've seen so many legends throughout the years. Today we look at the life of one of our greatest legends, Mario Alberto Kempis, El Matador. Mario led the line for Los Che for a remarkable eight years, picking up incredible accolades and reaching the very pinnacle of the world of football. But before he kicked a single ball in La Mastaya, he began his career in Argentina. Born in the town of Belleville, Argentina, of the Cordoba province, Mario was inspired by his father, also a footballer. After a dazzling youth career, a young Mario finally got his breakthrough, signing for Teleris at just 14 years old. Mario burst onto the professional scene before his 20th birthday, scoring an incredible 11 goals in 13 matches, the type of numbers that would secure him today a 30 to 40 million euro move. At just 19 years of age, Mario made his debut on the world's biggest stage, the 1974 World Cup. Unfortunately for Mario and his compatriots, they'd have to wait four more years for glory, as Argentina was eliminated in the first round. This wasn't all. This wasn't all for loss, though, as Mario secured a transfer to Rosario Central, one of Argentina's biggest teams, where he would go on to net 85 goals in 107 games, an incredible return for the young Mario. Kempes arrived at the Mastaya in the summer of 76 for half a million pounds. This was a very large fee in those days from Rosario Central. Valencia chairman Ramos Costa agreed to the staggering fee despite never have actually seen Kempes in action. Costa was a frequent reader of El Grafico, an Argentinian publication whose pages were full of a lavish praise for young Mario's exploits. Mario at just 21 had scored 96 goals in 120 games in his homeland. Many people at the time questioned such a large transfer fee for a relatively unproven player. Many thought that Mario couldn't cut it at the highest level of Spanish and European football, but he quickly, he quickly silenced his doubters when he netted 24 and 28 goals in his opening two campaigns. He became the second Argentinian to win the Pachichi Award behind Alfredo De Stefano when he won it in 77 and 78. He was later matched by Lionel Messi. What a trio for the Albi Celeste. Kempes was incredible to see in action. At six feet tall, he possessed the skills of a much shorter man. He was a hard working forward, known for carrying the ball into the box and possessing a clinical left foot, making him a lethal finisher from range. All this in an era when most center forwards stayed in the box and operated simply as target men. It cannot be overstated how special a skill set that Mario Kempes had. It leads me to believe that he was an inspiration for Diego Maradona and other great left footed Argentinians like Lionel Messi. Once again, Argentina turned to Mario Kempes in the summer of 1978. Legendary manager Cesar Minotti described him as a strong, skillful player who can create space and shoot hard. He's a player who can make a difference. And what a difference Mario made in the 1978 World Cup. He led El Abi Celeste to glory in the game's biggest stage. In the 1978 World Cup, Kempes put away an incredible six goals, earning him the golden boot and golden ball. None bigger than his two goals in the World Cup final, one in the 35th and one in extra time in the 105th to give Argentina its first World Cup trophy over a legendary Dutch side. Mario could have retired after the 78 World Cup and he would have had a truly legendary footballing career, but he just wasn't done winning. He returned to Los Che's in 79 and helped power Valencia to the 1979 Copa del Rey final, but he wasn't done there. He put his full powers on display in the 79 final, scoring two goals against Real Madrid to help Valencia capture its fifth Copa del Rey. The good times continued to roll for Mario and Valencia, helping Valencia win the 1980 Cup Winners' Cup over a tough Arsenal side, and then also winning the 1980 UEFA Super Cup over a Nottingham Forest side that had just come off of European dominance. Valencia fans were in mourning as they waved goodbye to Mario in the summer of 81. Mario was once again returning to Argentina, this time for one of its truly elite clubs, River Plate. Despite Mario performing admirably, scoring 15 goals in 29 games for the Argentine outfit, they couldn't actually afford his big transfer fee, which was six times what Valencia had originally paid. And Mario returned to Los Ches, and the, when once again the Valencia fans were united with their most famous idol. Mario returned to the world's biggest stage once again in the summer of 1982 at the World Cup. Unfortunately, he couldn't repeat his heroics of 78, and the team fell to eventual champions, Italy, in the quarterfinals of that year's tournament. Mario called the quits on World Cups, and Argentinian fans would have to wait another four years to taste glory. Mario could never again reach the heights he previously had with Valencia, 
In his final two seasons with Valencia, ending in 1984, Mario scored 21 goals in 42 games. This truly shows how great of a player he was when a goal in every two games wasn't up to the standards that he had set for himself. Mario absolutely will go down as one of the most prolific strikers in Valencia history. Mario would continue to delight the fans of the world's beautiful game for another 12 years, continuing his career up until 1996. When it was all said and done, Mario had scored 334 goals, 300 of those coming in league play. Mario truly was a legend of the game. It appeared that Mario's time with Valencia was up, however he came back into service of the club that he loved in 2013 signing on as an ambassador. While most ambassadors simply take paychecks and do publicity stunts, Mario wanted to actually help the team. After an embarrassing loss to Ibar, Mario called out the team and called out the ownership group. Of course, the ownership group didn't like that, and unfortunately Mario was told that he was no longer ambassador of the club. Mario fought to the very end for the club that he loved, and all Valencia fans know that Mario truly is an ambassador of this club, whether the ownership wants to admit that or not. Mario is Valencia's greatest legend. Today, Mario is best remembered for winning the 78 World Cup in his role as a great team contributor. But Mario won so many great individual awards. In 1978, he was recognized as the world's greatest player, winning the Ballon d'Or retroactively. In 77 and 78, Mario is recognized as La Liga's top scorer with a Pachichi Award. Mario is recognized as South America's Football of the Year in 78. And then in 2004, Mario got recognition from Pele when he named him one of the 100 greatest living soccer players. In 2006, Mario was named the 6th greatest Argentinian player of the century. And then also, in 2015, Mario was named as part of Argentina's all-time football team showing him that his legacy lives on even 50